Constant velocity. Constant velocity. Constant velocity. Absolutely nothing. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. In this episode we're taking a look at constant velocity. Now if I had to sum up the cut you saw in the intro there, in a single word it would simply be bollocks. Not because of the way it looks, but because of the way it doesn't look. It doesn't look anything like the file that I drew or the file I loaded into Mac 3. And it's all thanks to constant velocity. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rerun that file and I'm going to run it in exact stop mode by disabling constant velocity. And we'll see what difference that makes to our cut. Now you'll notice that the inner circle of my hexagonal part is unchanged. But when it comes to doing the outer of the hexagonal, that is machining exactly as drawn and as shown in the G-code file. So I'm not going to pretend I spent ages setting up constant velocity on the machine. In actual fact, I just left it at default. What I really wanted to show here was the effect of constant velocity on the part that you're machining. And as you can see, effectively constant velocity goes through and makes up its own tool parts, all in the name of keeping its speed constant. Is that what you really want from your machine? You give it a project to do and then it takes as many shortcuts as it possibly can to get it done as quickly as it can. It's not what I want anyway. One of the things that constant velocity does really well is it can take really poorly written g-code and make it run nice and smoothly. But when I started out in this hobby some 15 years ago, the only controller I had ran exact stop mode and didn't do constant velocity. I learned very quickly that if I simply wrote the G-code properly, it would run just as smoothly. When I did change to a machine that did have constant velocity, I ended up turning it off because I want my machine to machine what I ask it to, not what it thinks it should. So now let's take a quick look at how basic constant velocity works. Welcome to DoorCam. When it comes to constant velocity, what we tell the machine is, I want you to run at a certain speed. And just like being in a car, when we come to a corner, we have to start taking shortcuts to keep our vehicle running at a constant speed to get around it. So if our car was running in exact stop mode, it would be that we would come up to the corner, stop, and then turn and continue on. A nice sharp right angle bend. But in constant velocity, again, just like a car, you've got to pick your line and travel through the corner. So, we come up to the corner like so, and then we take a wee arc and continue onwards. But what happens if your car is running faster? Well, then we may end up having to cut the corner even more, like so, to keep our constant velocity. And that's basically what the constant velocity of Mac 3 and other controls are doing. It's taking shortcuts to keep the speed constant. And it's not only in the XY direction. I don't know if you noticed it there, but for instance, the circle in the center started and ended, and there was a gap in the center of it. That's because to keep that speed up, the z-axis had to come down. It started traveling around in the arc even before it got down to the material. And then, to keep the constant velocity again, it started rising up out of that, uh, off the material, to move on to the next cut. It didn't have time to actually finish the circle. That's a really big problem when it comes to machining things. Now, there are settings in the likes of Mac 3 and other controllers to control constant velocity. For instance, you can tell it if the angle is of a certain or greater than a certain number of degrees, then ignore it, turn constant velocity off and run an exact stop mode. You can also tell it uh, how many lines to look ahead, to plan what motion it wants to make, 
and you can also tell it what the margin of error is that you want. So even if it's running fast and you tell it you only want a small margin of error, it may just do this instead of this. That doesn't alter the fact though that it's still changing what it is that you drew. Now a lot of people have trouble setting up constant velocity and it's no wonder because the, by the very nature of constant velocity it changes what you drew. So you draw something, you set up constant velocity, you machine it and say, well this doesn't look like what I drew. So you change more settings and run it again. Oh, this still doesn't look like what I drew. Well it's not surprising because if constant velocity is working, it's not going to give you what you drew. It's only going to do that when it's turned off and running in exact stop mode. Now you might say to me, but I don't run constant velocity on my machine. But are you sure? Check your G-code file in the header section. If you see a G64 command, that means run in constant velocity mode. If you see a G61, that means run in exact stop mode. Now, if the G64 command is present and you've enabled constant velocity on your machine, then your machine is probably running in constant velocity mode. Even if you don't see the G64, you may already have the machine set up to always run in constant velocity mode. Now, I don't have this issue because I run the Maso CNC controller and it doesn't do constant velocity at all. Nor does it require it. By writing my G code properly, I get to machine my parts smoothly and accurately. So before we go any further, a quick word from this week's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Maso CNC Controller. Maso can run mills, lathes, routers, plasma machines and more. Simply connect your stepper or server motor drives, a monitor, keyboard, mouse and pen drive with your G-code. No PC required, giving outstanding reliability while eliminating driver and motion card compatibility issues. Maso, the PCless controller. Powerful, stable, guaranteed. So with constant velocity, we get smooth motion, but at the expense of accuracy. Now, smooth motion is really important. With smooth motion, you get a much better quality of finish. If you have a much rougher motion, you're going to end up with scallop marks throughout your project, which you then need to go and finish up by hand. If you can make those smooth, you may not even need to touch it at all. Now, when I create my G-code, I do something similar to what constant velocity does. I go through and I look at all the little lines and the curves and the arcs, and I smooth out those lines and then I create g-code based on that and the machine runs smoothly so what's the difference you might hear you ask why not just let constant velocity do that it's because constant velocity is unpredictable as I demonstrated earlier the faster you go the bigger the shortcuts it's going to take and you're reliant on the settings that you have in constant velocity to set the final toolpath you get if you do it in your CAM software, you are providing exactly what you want, and no matter how fast you machine it, you will end up with the same part. It's not going to change. Now you might say, well, I can set up constant velocity to do that as well, and that's true. But it's still not as good in doing it in CAM software. And the real problems start when you need to make parts that mesh together. Ah, fit, damn you, fit! Imagine you're making a project that consists of um, interlocking joints or inlays. And if you let constant velocity monkey about with those tool parts, you're going to find that the parts won't mesh together as they should. Constant velocity adding a little bit extra here or taking a little bit extra away from there, you may find that they just don't go together or won't fully close properly or you could end up with little holes in it. The problem here is that constant velocity is unpredictable in the way it treats your tool paths. And it's all down to what speed you run at. 
On the other hand, if I take my cam software and look at the toolpath and smooth out my arcs and my straight lines so that it runs nice and smoothly on the machine, I now have a predictable toolpath when I run it in exact stop and it will run it just as smoothly. In fact, what I'm doing is trying to simulate exactly what constant velocity is doing. But I now have an advantage. I can run my file and it will make exactly what I've drawn. And even more importantly, I can take my toolpath or drawing and use that to create the mating part that goes with it. And again, when I run that, it will run it exactly as drawn, just as smoothly and just as accurately. The result is I get parts that will mesh together properly. Don't forget V-carving. If you let constant velocity take over your V-carving toolpaths, you're going to find that the V-carvings don't look quite as they should. So that's my big problem with using constant velocity. I just don't personally see the need for it. Well, especially when I can make my G-code basically do the same thing that constant velocity does. So in the making of this video, I've been trying to work out what the true purpose of constant velocity is. Now there's no doubt about it, it is definitely smoothing the motion of our tool parts. So that's a good thing. But I think more along the lines that it's actually trying to simulate good CAD CAM work practices, something that we should have addressed long before we brought the file to our machine for cutting. And in that respect, I'm almost thinking of it as some sort of a CNC beginner's mode, some way of making up for the deficiencies in the files that we create and present to our machines. So in the next episode, I'm going to take you through how I use my CAD CAM software to create smooth motion G-code that I can run on my machine using exact stop. I think you'll find it's easier than you think. If you're a user of constant velocity, why not leave a comment in the comment section below this video? I'd be really interested to know what you use it for. Is there something that constant velocity does that I'm not aware of? And that's where I'm going to leave this video. All that remains to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.